Good morning, Kingsley community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for New Year's Day, January 1st, 2021. Woohoo, we made it. So um, I'm going to continue the last day of our theme, We're Chosen to Fellowship Together, and today is by being honest with each other. Okay. So our scripture reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 25. No more lies, no more pretense. Tell your brother the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other. When you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Well, that makes sense if we're a body connected to each other as um, with the head, Jesus Christ. And if we lie to one of our um, brothers and sisters in Christ, we're actually lying to ourselves since we're all connected. So the writers write, honesty strengthens community. Honesty deepens our relationships, allowing us to be transparent with one another. It keeps our community open and authentic, freeing us to speak the truth in love. As we practice remarkable integrity, it keeps us sensitive to the Holy Spirit's guidance and helps us battle deceptions that could erupt in our lives in Christ. Honesty requires us to say what we mean and mean what we say. We're to show the same honesty in public as we do in private. Don't you, don't you struggle with people that pretend to look good in front of other people and then when you're alone with them or a few of you, they are passive aggressive, <laughs> mean, manipulative, you know those kind of people. Not so with the body of Christ. We are not to act like that. And the Holy Spirit will make sure we don't act like that because the Holy Spirit will put pressure on us to tell the truth. We're committed to one truth, not many. That's from the Apostle John, chapter 14, verse 6. There are to be no more lies. As new creations in Christ, we've taken off our old selves according, and accordingly we should no longer lie to each other. The devil is the father of lies. There is no truth in him. When we lie, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar. So when we lie, we are really siding with evil. That's not good. Okay. There are two kinds of lies, the writer writes, the lies of commission. These are lies we are specifically where we specifically make false statements, but the Bible says we're to put off falsehood and speak truthfully. We don't want to become liars who have lied so well and for so long that they don't even know the truth anymore. There's some really good liars out there. People can lie right to your face and you don't even know it because they've been lying for a long time. And that's just how they are, and um, it is not in the body of Christ. That's not to happen. Then there's lies of omission. These are lies where we fail to tell the whole truth, and we wink at the deception of others. That's where we know the whole truth, but we're only going to let them know partial, partially what happened, because we think the other part's not important. And so that's type of lying. These lies are characteristic of the smooth talk used in Paul's time to gain entry into the homes of unstable and needy women for the purpose of taking advantage of them. So they did back then, they would go into the homes of the widowers, widows and they would lie to get in there and then they would steal them blind. Who steals from a widow? Rude. <clears throat> so there's the lies where you specifically lie and make a false statement and you do it so much that it becomes easy for you. If lying has become easy to, for you, beware. And then there's the lies of omission where you, for, you um, refuse to tell the entire truth. So there is to be no more of this, Paul writes. We refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes. And we don't twist God's word to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in the open, the whole truth on display so that those who want to can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. There's some really good manipulators out there, and they're very good at it. And so that is not to happen in the body of Christ. Paul says, in fact, we're to use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Otherwise, dishonesty will pollute our lives together and it will be difficult to develop a deeper trust for one another. The writers write, for instance, we may think going back to our old, to our word in some man, in some matters is minor, 
but it would end up causing problems throughout the entire congregation. The New Testament records such an incident at the church in Galatia when the apostle told Peter told some new Christians one thing, but then did something entirely different, Galatians 2.12. His actions threatened the faith of the congregation filled with brand new believers, so Paul had a face-to-face -face confrontation with him because he was clearly out of line. And then Paul ends his famous Romans 4.11b. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure and lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. God says one day every tongue will confess the honest truth that I and I am alone God. So, don't lie. Because every time you lie or you forget to tell the entire truth of an incident, you know, when there's a conflict, all you do is talk about in truth, what the other person did, but you don't acknowledge what you did. That would be the type of lying by omission. Then there's lying by commission, which means you just intentionally lie. Either one is a no-no. And when you do, um, when we lie, um, you can expect the spirit to really beat you up if you're a believer in Christ. If you're not a believer in Christ, then you're just going to get used to lying and lying and lying, and nobody will be able to trust you. And that will be a terrible way to live. Because every time we lie, it means we agree with Satan and evil. Question to ponder, which temptation are you more prone to struggle with, lies of commission or lies of omission? So, I hope that was helpful. Now, I'm going on vacation. Yay, me. So, I'll be gone for about five days, not too long. Um, and then I will be back, and I will do another devotional for you when I get back. So, enjoy your new year, your day off, your time to sleep in. And remember that God got you to 2021, so give him thanks today. All right, we'll see you in a week. Bye-bye.